Let's talk about these four rules. So there's four rules, but we're going to start off with one just sort of absolute concept, and that is high to low. If you want to think of high to low, I mean, it's, most of us would understand this pretty intuitively, but if you just think of gravity, right? Take something up in an airplane, drop it, it falls. So there's a gravitational force that pulls things from high to low, and we can relate to that. In fact, when I try to teach people this concept, I'll use a lot of different examples. An example of a ball rolling down a hill and the potential energy difference between the top of the hill and the bottom of the valley, especially when you're talking about sine wave and voltage and all that sort of thing. There's a lot of different ways you can explain that. But what we're talking about is differentials in energy. So you can think of differentials in intensity, differentials in force, differentials in concentration even, but there's differentials in energy states. But this specifically, just get down to the nitty-gritty. What are the four rules? High pressure goes to low pressure. High temperature goes to low temperature. High voltage goes to low voltage. And high humidity goes to low humidity. Another way of saying that is everything in nature tends towards equalization, but that doesn't sound as cool, right? I mean, that sounds kind of sciencey, but everything tends to just sort of come together and create a stasis, create a balance in energy. But if you remember, high pressure goes to low pressure, high temperature goes to low temperature, high voltage goes to low voltage, and high humidity goes to low humidity. Those are the forces that drive everything that we do in our industry. And there's tons of examples of this. I mean, if you think about what a compressor does, compressor creates a differential in pressure. Without that compressor generating that differential in pressure, you don't have an air conditioning system. There's no potential energy. There's no motion. You have to get the motion. You have to get the differential going, and you do that by creating that pressure differential. Temperature. We're continuously manipulating the temperatures of refrigerants, or even if you don't use refrigerants, let's say you use water or glycol, we're constantly manipulating the temperature of a medium that we want to transfer heat from something to something. So we want to transfer heat from the inside of the house to the refrigerant inside of that evaporator coil. So you have to have a difference in temperature to do that. In order to get energy to move, you have to have a difference. And we create that difference by first starting by creating a differential in pressure, which then ends up manipulating the latent phase of the refrigerant so that we get a very low temperature of Alberta coil in relationship to the air around it so that that way the hot in the air goes to the cold in the evaporator coil. My grandpa used to tell me this. I think my grandpa took like six months in an HVAC class when he was younger. And whenever we would talk about HVAC, he'd say, I know the main rule, hot goes to cold. In truth, it's actually not that simplistic. There's actually energy transferring both ways. But on average, hot goes to cold. High pressure goes to low pressure. High temperature goes to low temperature. That's how it goes to cold. High voltage goes to low voltage. High humidity goes to low humidity. And so when you have an example of humidity, let's say you have a, a cloth. And on one side, you have an air mass that has higher humidity content. And then the other side, you have an air mass that has lower humidity content. That moisture wants to travel from the higher concentration to the lower concentration on the other side. That is what we would call diffusion. It wants to create a stasis. It wants to create an equilibrium. And so it wants to diffuse through that porous cloth, and it will diffuse from the higher humidity concentration to the lower humidity concentration. In voltage, if we have a neutral that's sitting at zero volts to ground, it's all bonded together, and then we have a 120 volt, either AC or DC, on the other side, and we make a path between them, the electrons will go from the higher voltage, the higher energy state, to the lower energy state. And then the same thing with temperature. Temperature, we talk about this a lot on the podcast, is average molecular velocity. It's the speed of the molecules that are bouncing around. So we would call that an intensity. So there's an intensity of the molecules. There's a velocity of the molecules, and that's what we call temperature. And it will move from higher intensity, higher velocity, to lower intensity, lower velocity. Whether it be through radiation, convection, or conduction, it will eventually create an equilibrium because that's just what energy does. It seeks an equilibrium. So there we go. That's it. That is literally all there is to this podcast. This is going to be super short. I just wanted you to get that because I think we would be good to mention these four things more often when we bring people into the field, when you have an apprentice riding in your truck, and you're just constantly show them how everything we do is examples of these four things. As it stands right now, when I get a person into Kalos, the first thing I want to talk about is energy and how it moves. And sure, you can get real in-depth. You can talk about chemical energy storage and potential energy storage and kinetic, and we can go through all this different stuff, the different ways that heat is transferred. But before I do any of that, I just want to establish high goes to low in these four areas.